Hey there everybody, Kevin Schulteis here. It's going to be great to have you. We are now going to go through the party platform, the policies as it were, the CHP policies. So we are going to go through that as we go. This is the table of contents, all the, there's quite a few different topics, basically seven or eight, uh, basically ten different tent poles. And then of course they go into details. So we are going to get into those details right now. So let's just go into it. So the Canadian nation, we're going to go through each one and I'll comment as I need to, uh, but we're thankful uh, for our Christian heritage, right? In Canada. And, um, and that's true. That's a general statement that Canada was founded on Christian uh, principles and there is a lot that we wish to uphold and or even restore. We're not trying to go back to the dark ages or anything like that. Sometimes people freak out and they, they think they're going to lose all kinds of rights and we have to go back to medieval days or something like that where, you know, people take it to the extreme. No, uh, we want to just base Canada on general principles. Uh, and morality, and we want to get back to that. Uh, we think we've slipped very far away from that with even the term of politics and how we run our country is just atrocious. We do not run our budget morally. We do not run our country morally. We do not run our justice system morally. Um, it is just a giant mess. So there's a lot of general principles we want to get back to and or restore. And we actually have a huge history of Christian principles in our nation, right? Um, so we believe that uh, obedience to God and his commandments should be the foundation of government. That's completely true. I agree with that. We believe that it's wise to enhance public appreciation of God's role. Um, we're not going to force people to believe certain things, but we are going to acknowledge its importance which is really good. Uh, loyalty, uh, we, we t truly believe, yeah, being loyal to one's nation um, out of appreciation and whatnot is important. Same with patriotism and, um, and just general freedom, right? We believe Canada really has been blessed by um, a lot of freedoms and freedoms need to be fought for. They need to be... Um, we need to be diligent. If we do not fight for our freedoms, uh, we will lose them. So the majority of us don't actually even talk about freedom. So therefore, we're part of the problem. So we want to bring attention to that. This is a bit of my personal uh, uh, enhancement is most people are pretty darn ignorant in Canada. So that is not a good thing. We need to bring awareness to freedom. Um, we need to bring awareness that freedom in Canada did exist, is existing, and and we and we got to bring attention to the fact that we are losing our freedoms, uh, a variety of different things. So we want uh, to be able to bring freedom back, and we are becoming a slave to a variety of different tent poles um, and issues of which some of these we're going to go through. So freedom is a huge word for me, right? And we want to make sure we go through that. Right, uh, we have a huge history. Uh, we have a huge geography, and we have a ton of different um, people. Canada is definitely very interesting in the fact that we are a mixing pot of a lot of different cultures and whatnot. So we want to unify versus divide over a ton of issues. Right, so that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, Canada's constitution is a good thing. And we want to make sure that it's strong and enforced and uh, we want to actually be able to um, recognize those things, including the fact that uh, it recognizes that we are built on a Christian platform and we want to make sure that that's important, right? Uh, citizenship, right? Where's, um, what does it say here? Yep, so we want people to be able to call Canada home. So that's a good thing, right? We want to have respect. Uh, anybody that's going to be coming to Canada, they need to actually respect what Canada is about. Um, yes, people can come in and be a mixing pot with their own values and opinions, but at the same time, you are coming here because those prior values and freedoms 
you want. So you need to adapt and take a look at what is currently here and the reasons why you want to come here is because our past um, our, our past has actually brought us these principles have bought us freedoms that you want. So you need to come to Canada and you need to respect those things right so um anywhere from our morals and our social and how we run our governments things like that right so you need to come uh come here we definitely acknowledge that we um uh, uh we are very multicultural and that yes you can come with your different backgrounds different beliefs and whatnot and you are welcome here but at the same time you got to make sure you respect what is already here right um we need to build a sense of being Canadian. That's fine. And uh, we definitely recognize uh, Canada being a huge English and French background. Those are our two primary languages uh, that have been uh, part of our history. So we uh, see the value of, oops, sorry about that. We see the value of both those things. That's great. Um, Aboriginal things and indigenous people right so uh we want to it says here right treaty claims should be settled equitably and as soon as possible uh, and that's even another issue too it's just as soon as possible and this will get into some other topics as well about our legal systems is we got to speed things up this when you do not deal with things in a timely fashion that is a big issue and that in itself is a bit of an injustice so we want to uh, make sure we take care of um, different acts and, and whatnot, right? Um, including some of the different acts. So I'm not that familiar with some of these, so I'm gonna have to look up and read up on some of these different uh, acts that we need to be uh, dealing with. Uh, as part of the CHP, it says the Indian Act is outdated and should be abolished. I have zero opinion or comment on that because I have no idea uh, if this, I, even the name of this Indian Indian Act, I'm guessing that's a specific act. Um, so the CHP says it's outdated and should be abolished. Uh, so I don't have a comment on that as of yet. Um, maybe by election time I will. Uh, steps toward healing. Uh, generally, we should try to reconcile and uh, bring attention to different issues. Yes, we should do that. Immigration, right? So uh, we need to uh, be a sovereign state that has reasonable right of access and we need to have the ability to say who and who does not come into Canada and that's fine. Immigrant must be away made aware before their entry into Canada that they are to buy, uh, abide by our common laws which again comes down to Christian moral values right and principles right immigrants have an obligation to become self-sufficient in the shortest time possible right and to respect our laws and our heritage right uh, we should de deport if um, if there's major uh, non-capital offenses committed by landed immigrants okay that's where the policy uh, is currently right I think if you come to Canada you should be a self-sufficient person um, for the most part you do not come here for our social systems um, and whatnot uh, you should be a contributing member ASAP as soon as possible so that is that uh, and if you're not well you most likely shouldn't be in Canada and um, you need to contribute yes there are um, re refugees and things like that and we can get into that shortly and our policy might actually even have something about that. Um, public discourse, okay. Uh, Canada's immigration policies and statistics, the cost of maintaining our immigrants and refugees uh, should be a matter of public record and should not be uh, kept. So costs for dealing with um, uh, maintenance and refugees and things should be completely public and open. So we believe in that so we can make proper decisions. Now refugees, right? We affirm um, that um, a lot of governments, uh, we need to have a refugee policy and we should uh, have compassion towards genuine refugees and offer justice and peace and personal freedoms when 
it adheres to biblically based principles. Uh, we we must not abuse the um, refugee program and shelter criminals uh, and whatnot. So, and they should be deported uh, if they don't meet with our guidelines. Hey everybody, Kevin Schultes back again. We are going to go through the second part of the uh, uh, our CHP policies. We just covered the Canadian nation policy, policy kind of number one. So that went through general statements and loyalty and patriotism and freedom and multiculturalism and uh, refugees and language and immigration and a variety of things. So number two, we are now going to, let me zoom in here. We are going to now go through, oh, there we go, national sovereignty issues. So uh, I'll go through each one and I will comment as needed if I agree or disagree or whatever. And we'll go from there. So general statements, we want to affirm, affirm Canada as a free nation. That's what I love. Uh, and we should safeguard Canada with all necessary uh, things, right? To both protect our, our nation internally and externally, right? Including offshore resources. The Crown, we affirm our allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen of Canada and her heirs and successors according to law. We affirm also that the Crown is chief political and legal symbol of Canada's sovereignty and independence. I couldn't care less this whole thing about the Queen and respecting our allegiance back to Britain and the Queen. I think it's kind of dumb, not needed, old and outdated. Um, and there's even talk if once the Queen passes, do we continue using her uh, or uh, whether it's the Queen or do we switch to the Prince, or, you know, uh, Charles or whatever like that. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a strong opinion about it. I couldn't, in some ways, couldn't care less. It's it's okay to, you know, acknowledge some of our past there, um, but it's just not needed. And she's been a long time symbol for sure. Uh, I think longest running um, patriarch, I think almost of any nation, I think. Um, so in some ways it's like a big part of Canada's history because Canada hasn't we're, we're celebrating our 150th birthday coming up here this July 5th or July 1st this July 1st uh, 2017 is going to be Canada's 150th birthday um, so yes Queen Elizabeth has run her life as a big part of Canada's history but I don't think it's that important to acknowledge um, that but that's not a deal breaker for me or not um, I couldn't care less it's kind of a neat thing. Parliament, uh, our parliamentary system, whether we have the where where we have the Crown, the Senate, House of Commons, um, and has proved it says here it's proved itself over the centuries to be stable, just, and conductive. I definitely have some suggestions on how to update some of that um, and make sure that we actually have additional checks and balances. I have uh, some strong opinions on how we should uh, reform some of our. Uh, government and um, go from there so we'll see if some of these platforms uh, deal with that right 